Hey guys, welcome back to what used to be my shop. Uh, so it begins, the deconstruction of the shop has already started. I've already cleared out all the walls and I'm going to show you those in just a few minutes. But um, I went ahead and removed the miter saw station, got the cabinets off the walls, I got that pegboard that had all my tools and stuff hanging on off the wall. And I've already started insulating the rest of this wall and getting ready to fur everything out. Uh, and hang the pegboard. Now it's about 3.15 in the morning. I've been working most of the day kind of packing up the shop. I've got a lot of boxes here and big boxes of a lot of things that I had in the shop. And I've actually uh, got a volunteer, uh, another woodworker by the name of Kevin Wright who happens to live in Ocala. He's going to stop by in the morning which is in a few hours. Uh, I'm about to go get some rest for the evening and we're going to start fresh in the morning and he's going to help me. We're going to get these boxes out here and carry these uh, couple bits of cabinets out and then we're going to start furring out the walls and uh, hanging the pegboard. Now the furring strips I'm just going to use uh, it's a 1x3 furring strip. Uh, we're going to do a header uh, one across the, the base of the walls and then every 24 inches we're going to have uh, furring strips so it'll give it a lot of support and it'll be nice and solid and everything so we got a lot of work ahead of us with regards to that um, let's take a look and let me kind of give you a show of what this place looks like as a disaster area right now um, it's there's not much to see of course but just to give you an idea just from what it was if you've seen in all my videos what my shop was to what it is right at this very moment so as I said, I've got some boxes. Uh, most of the stuff that was in my shop is in uh, most of these boxes as well as boxes I've already put out in the shop. And when Kevin gets here in the morning, we're going to go ahead and move these out as well as these cabinets that I've removed off the wall. This is where the miter saw station was and that pegboard uh, that had all my tools and, and, and stuff hanging on it. All that's taken down. All the jigs that were on this wall over here where the air conditioner were taken down and everything has been cleared out. The only thing that's left in here is the downdraft table and the table saw and it's got some remnants of some stuff on it that, that needs to get packed up still. But I've already started insulating the wall. I've still got a couple of battens of insulation to put in. And over here, this is where the air conditioner used to be uh, a couple of years ago in the shop. And what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about removing the air conditioner from over here and putting it back where it belongs because I actually have a dedicated outlet over here that is on its own circuit for the air conditioner. So I'm going to put it back over there, but first I'm going to reframe this area out uh, and I'm going to put a header up here and I'm going to actually raise the air conditioner up high. Uh, that way I can have a lot of this lower wall space for what ever I decide to do with it. Now the original or the not the original but the plan is that this wall over here once it gets pegboarded and everything I'm actually going to put some shelf supports up and with the shelf supports and everything I'm going to put uh, lumber racks. So hopefully in the next couple of days we have some changes you know and everything gets pretty much done. Uh, I'd like to since it's Friday, I'd like to have by Sunday at the latest this whole building done and kind of temporarily set back up for a workshop again so I can start Monday morning fresh to working on, you know, projects and things again. Because Wednesday we got a video coming up and of course it's going to be part of this video that I'm showing you and some of the changes and everything. But, you know, hopefully we can start building some uh, organizational, you know, shelving and stuff like that for the pegboard and all. So, We'll get there, uh, see you bright and early in the morning, and we'll get started again. Like I said, I'm going to film this whole process, so hopefully you'll be able to take something from it.
guys, things are coming along quite well. Uh, it's Sunday, got the weekend uh, over with now, and the shop is completely paneled with the pegboard. I already started hanging some of the accessories as you see behind me, just kind of getting a feel for uh, where I want to place things because now I have unlimited potential of uh, accessories and stuff that I can build for storage areas and everything. So it's kind of just uh, going to be just a little bit of trial and error and, and, and playing around and seeing where I want things. And because this is going to be the assembly room and finish area, I'm just mostly putting things for, you know, assembly and finish in here, uh, as well as I'm going to have some lumber racks, uh, as you know, just because I think this is going to be a good place to store the uh, lumber. Now, um, as you see behind me, this opening here, there's two of them on each wall, and you can't see the other one, it's out of uh, screenshot, but these are recessed into the walls and it's just an empty cavity right now because we're going to be building in one of our project videos coming up here either next week, I think it's going to be next week, uh, we're going to be building an in the wall storage case and it's going to hold uh, both of them are, we're going to build two of them and they're going to hold all of our finishes, all of our stains, our spray lacquers, our spray cans of paint. Uh, and you know any little bit of uh, finishing material and stuff that will fit on the shelves um, so look forward to that project it's coming up because I want to go ahead and get the walls done and then start moving some things in here since the building is completely done I need to kind of do a temporary setup of tools uh, so I can do some woodworking and stuff in here while I am putting electric and insulation and paneling into the other building and getting it ready because that's going to be the new shop for the actual woodworking cutting and everything I want this area to be virtually pretty much dust free um, and just for assembly and finishing so we'll see how well that plays out uh, I think it's going to be a nice little um, situation but We'll figure it out, but yeah, so next week we'll get into building those recessed storage areas. And that's just a great way. There is hidden storage room in your shops. If you have a wood framed um, shop or, or building, these are the areas in between the wall studs. And that gives you an area about four and an eighth or you know four and a quarter inches of you know storage space. And these are about um, 60 inches tall I went and that will be plenty of room for uh, lots of storage for different cans and everything but with the furring strips the furring strips are about a half inch uh, thick to 5 8 somewhere around there and then the walls are three and a half of course they're two by four stud walls and then the paneling and everything so we have that much room uh, for storage and it's plenty of room to hold your cork cans all your spray cans uh, your pints of finishes or your different size finishes. The only thing it won't hold are your gallons of finishes and we're going to uh, make some storage for that. But all in all, it's going to give me a couple of nice places to um, store some of my finishes. Now, I could have made uh, quite a few of them in different areas of the shop. I only made two, but um, I could have made areas uh, all over the shop for that recess because that's a great way to put things into the wall instead of them you know like cabinets being on the outside of the wall but I decided to go ahead and go with two we'll see how it goes and if hey if I decide I want another one or something all I have to do is cut out the area between the two studs and build another one so it's just that simple and like I said hidden potential in the walls if you have a two by four uh, you know framed a wood framed building think about recess storage uh, it's a good opportunity to um, utilize some of that space and also open up some space in your shop by going into the walls. Um, now, the only thing that's left to do in this shop, of course, is set it up, get everything uh, organized and, and, and hung on the wall, get some storage areas built and some shelving built and stuff. Uh, but I also need to do the outlet covers and everything because I furred the walls out and put the paneling. I need to add some mud rings or goof rings I call them 
uh, that will slip in their box extenders, should I say, uh, that'll slip into those existing outlet boxes and bring the outlets out uh, to the outside of the wall. Sort of like what I did with these two outlets here. I need to go ahead and do that with the rest that are in the room, and I'll do that tomorrow. The door of this shop uh, is, when, when I installed it, I just installed it because it happened to be a door I had, and um, I needed to, you know, put a door in the shop. But it's an in-swing door, and I don't want that. I want an out-swing door, so I'm going to be changing this door. And actually, I'm not going to use a conventional door like this. I'm going to build a door and once again the inside of the or the door will be finished on the outside of course but on the inside I can hang pegboard on the board on the door so that it blends in with the rest of the walls and I can use it as storage. I can actually build it depending on how I want to build it. If I build it out of two by fours and everything there's some added uh, storage on the inside of the door. Uh, so it'll have a finished look in here almost like a cabinet, but it'll be the door to the shop So then playing around with that design and it's just something I don't want an in-swing door It takes up too much room swinging it in I'd much rather it swing out and it should swing out anyway because of an emergency egress Okay guys on this long wall of the shop. I went ahead and installed the lumber rack now It's just a simple uh, closet rack system. It's made by a company called Blue Hawk and each one of these pair of shelves, uh, brackets, two of them, uh, have a 400 pound weight capacity and they're spread out every two feet uh, for a total length of eight foot because usually eight foot is about the length of stock that I have in here. Sometimes I might have 10 foot stock or something but it'll still go up on the rack. And underneath here I went ahead and slid my uh, scrap wood bin into place. Now you may remember this scrap wood bin used to sit in the opposite corner of the shop and it always had junk piled into it and scraps just thrown everywhere. And no matter how much I organized it, after each project things would get thrown around and tossed around or pulled out and it would always get disarrayed. Well I went ahead and weeded out uh, some of the scraps that I was saving that I really just don't need right now uh, but I don't want to get rid of them just yet so I have them stored in the other shop building right now and I'm going to be building another scrap wood bin so I can organize those pieces as well and I'll go through and weed out and see what I don't need and why I'm keeping it and so on and so forth but I've got a habit about not wanting to throw away scrap so in here are some main pieces that I did want to hang on to and I do want them in this room. The lumber rack, I just have uh, some miscellaneous wood that I used to have up in these rafters that are up here. And they're not really rafters, they're just roof supports because I have a slant roof on this particular building. And I went ahead and pulled them down from there and I put them on the rack. And also I'm going to take some of that pecan that I have and I'm going to uh, get this rack loaded up. Now, uh, the top row, these shelf supports are 18 inches, and then the other two rows are 14 inch shelf supports, so I can hold some pretty wide boards. And my, my biggest peak on board out there is about 15 inches wide, 15 and a half inches wide, so plenty of room, and, and, and the longer, wider boards are going to go up on top, and so on and so forth. Um, on the rest of the walls, I already started hanging some accessories, as you saw. Uh, earlier in the video and I'm getting ready to start building some more accessories to hang on the wall and what I'm doing is is all the boxes that I packed up in this shop I'm going through with each box one by one seeing what needs to be in this building what needs to stay over there in that building for when I set up that shop and the things that need to come over to this building I'm going to start accessorizing and making uh, supports for and the one thing that I do need to get in here is the clamp rack uh, on this part of the wall over here, this blank wall in this area, which is right out of screenshot, uh, I'm going to go ahead and build the clamp rack, and it's going to hold my bar clamps and my uh, aluminum uh, F clamps, you want to call them, and uh, the spring clamps as well as some uh, uh, just miscellaneous little clamps that I have. All my wooden clamps that I have are hanging on the wall on this area, as you saw earlier in the video. Now over on this wall here I've still got a blank canvas and I think I am going to uh, 
install a couple of cabinets, probably three cabinets, that will hold my gallon material, my gallon jugs and everything. Uh, and I think down below, I am going to build a workbench area with some shelves and everything in here. Um, and then in the middle of the floor, right now I've got my table saw still sitting in here because I have to use this area to do some woodworking and stuff. But in the middle of the floor here, I am going to build a low profile assembly table. And I may build a torsion box for that. I haven't decided yet. But it's going to be low profile. It's not going to be very tall off the ground. Um, and it will give me a chance to build you know, tall pieces and everything and have a nice flat surface to work off of. And I saw one a buddy of mine, the guy who mills my lumber, Robert Ross, he has one in his shop. And it's, it's pretty large and it's where he does all of his built-in, you know, he, he does built-in cabinets and, and all kinds of uh, you know, custom built-ins and different things. And he has one of those and it's just a, a, a great work table um, I see him assembling his you know big bookcases and everything on it and it gives him plenty of room uh, he's got some tall ceilings anyway my ceilings aren't that tall but by having a low profile work area I'll be able to assemble some tall things get them up off the ground and uh, it will work out nicely so I'm going to uh, be building some accessories and things and I want to show you a couple of the little accessories uh, that I'm going to be building and maybe you could use something like that and maybe you could kind of build along or build one like it or a couple like it and uh, it's pretty neat it's a, it's a little screw and sort you know miscellaneous uh, item holders I've got this empty canvas and that's the great thing about the pegboard I've got so many options of what I can do with it uh, and it'll be unbelievable and I'm looking forward to really just kind of, that's the challenge of building the things and the shelves and, and kind of laying it out because I can play around with it. The great thing about the pegboard is if you don't like one position, you can sit there and change it and find your perfect layout. I want to make this a very functional room. Uh, I want the workflow to be nice and comfortable. And that was the whole goal of remodeling the shop into a and turning it into an assembly and finish room. So with that, Let's take a look at some of these smaller little items uh, that I'm going to be building and you can possibly build along too. A couple of things that I built uh, that are going to hang on the wall are these little sorting boxes and what they are are just made out of a uh, small quarter inch uh, plywood and they hold all of my, this particular one holds all of my Craig screws, all of my inch and a quarter cores, fine my inch and a half cores, my two inch cores, two and a half inch cores, so on and so forth, uh, as well as my little wooden plugs for the, you know, the, for the pocket holes and everything. And this will go next to my Craig station. And that is another thing over on that far wall where I said I'm going to build that lower workbench underneath the cabinet. It is going to have my Craig jig clamped and built into it so I can do all of my pocket hole joinery and everything over in that back corner. So now these little screw sorters are just quarter inch and uh, some three eighths inch plywood. And on the front here is a piece of eighth inch plexiglass or 0.08 of an inch plexiglass. And I've got some simple blue tape running across here with markings as to what each bin is. So now it's very basic construction and if you notice back here I've got a little cavity and I have it the same way on the other side and I'll tell you why that is in just a minute but that gives it this little stair step feature so I have my bins here, shallow bins here and as I said we pulled all of my Craig screws that this particular one does from different sizes and everything and there'll be little hooks in the back that hook into the pegboard and these hooks are square bend uh, hooks. They're number 10. If you can see that, they're number 10 uh, square bent hooks and they screw in and they fit perfectly in those quarter inch pegboard holes. To give you an idea, here's a simple shelf that I built uh, and it's just like the other shelves in the shop. But in the back here, you'll see these little L brackets, uh, the little L hooks, and they fit perfectly into the peg holes and uh, 
they support the shelf and quite a bit of weight. So that's exactly what will be on the back of these and that will allow these to hang on the wall too. Now with regards to this cavity back here, I didn't want to waste any space. So what I'm going to do is these two bins that I made, uh, they're going to hang on the wall side by side and there'll probably be a short bit of distance uh, in between them, not very long. But they, uh, then I can slide all of my dowel stock and all my round stock, my all thread bars and my 3 16 metal rods and everything that all, all my little round stock can slide right in there and it'll be a holder for them uh, and they'll fit right in there and they'll fit in between the two and it'll be just like a little shelf for those uh, odd things that there's really no place for them uh, to go. So why not keep them organized and have a place where I can have instant access to them and they are stored away nicely. So these are going to be a couple of projects that we're going to build. We're going to build a, co a couple more of them because I need some more in here and then I'm going to put some in the other building as well. These projects here as well as the recessed cabinets that uh, are going to fill in this cavity and these recessed cabinets are going to be for all of your spray cans, all of your finish cans, your cork cans, your pint cans. Um, of finish and everything in the wall so they're going to hold quite a bit of storage as well as we have some storage here these little this little filing cabinet is for sandpaper sheets of sandpaper um, that I keep stored away and they have little dividers the dividers you know look almost like a little filing cabinet and each one of them are labeled 80 120 100 180 220 320 so on and so forth and that's where all of my big sheets go and then I'm going to have some little holders that hang on the wall for my orbital sandpaper for the orbital sander, the hook and loop uh, sanding sheets. We're going to make some little holders for those as well to get on the wall. Um, and up here above the AC is a paper towel rack. I need to build one more of these. One for paper towels, one for wax paper and then I'm going to be building a big one that holds the brown painters paper. Uh, the big rolls of uh, it's about 28 inches wide and I can slide that out and roll that out I'll probably hang it on a wall somewhere close to my workbench so all I have to do is pull it right off of the sheet and roll cover up I can do any finishing that I need to do then just rip it off throw it away pull another clean sheet when I need it so we've got a lot of different organizational projects that are coming up and I'm going to probably be doing maybe one or two projects in a video depending on how quickly they go because a lot of them are fairly simple so we should be able to do a couple of uh, different accessories in to one video. It, uh, we'll see how it goes in the next week or so. Well, all in all, the shop has come together. I'm going to bring a couple of more tools in here so I can do some woodworking tomorrow. I've got some projects that have to get out the door this week. Uh, and then we're going to get back to accessorizing and getting things set up, get our workbenches built. Uh, I'll take you through the steps on that for how I'm going to build the work table over on the other wall. Get the cabinets hung and the cabinets are going to be hung on a French cleat system. That way I can hang them there. I can uh, arrange them any way I want. And if I ever decide I want to do something different, we can get that off there. But we've got clamp racks. We've got workbenches, we've got accessories, there's all kinds of little projects that we're going to be building. So stay tuned, come back and see what's going on as we go through each one of these projects and get this shop decked out the way it needs to be. And then all of a sudden, when this one's done, we've got to move over to the new shop and get that one set up. Now, pretty much the steps are going to be the same, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, or the video projects and everything. I will show you kind of the different steps. I might do it in a video blog uh, of the remodel of that shop, depending on how things lay out. Now, if there's something new, of course, I will make a video of it and show it to you. Other than that, I'm going to try to get that shop set up pretty quickly so we can get rolling on to regular woodworking projects because we've got some cool projects coming in this year and I am excited about it. Well guys, I really appreciate you sticking with me through this transition of the shop and this projects and we're gonna get busy and uh, making some progress. And just think, when we get started on the other shop and everything, we're gonna be building some new roll around carts, uh, some mobile uh, tool stations and everything. Uh, so it's gonna be pretty cool. We're gonna be building a workbench. Uh, I don't have a workbench, so I want to build one uh, this year. And uh, before I close, there's one last change or you know one other new change for 2013 uh, all of 2012 you may recall in many of my videos you may have seen me wearing this Auburn University hat 
uh, and the hat I have had for many, many, many years. Uh, but it is taking its toll. It's all frayed and tore up. Some of the, you know, all the lining is gone. But it's such a comfortable hat, and I'm always wearing it all the time. Uh, well, one of my viewers, as well as UFOWW member Ken Hart, sent me over. He was kind enough to send me a new hat. And this one happens to be a Texas A&M hat. And I like the color, Ken, and Texas A&M is a good team, so I'll represent for you. Uh, but now, all of you Auburn fans, don't think I'm betraying you. That uh, Auburn hat has served me well for many years. It's not going far. It's going to be retired and hanging on the wall in the shop. War Eagle, so I don't want to hear any flack or any comments, you know, from uh, you Auburn fans uh, giving me flack about switching over to a Texas A&M hat. But, Ken, no safety worries now. Brand new hat. Look forward to seeing it in future videos because I will be wearing it. Nine times out of ten when I'm wearing a ball cap, it either means one or two things. One, I was running late, grabbed a hat and went out the door, didn't worry about brushing my hair. Or, number two, I need a haircut. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll be wearing it quite often. I really appreciate it, Ken. And that's Syntex Woodworker over at the UFOWW.com website, the members website and the forum. So, Syntex Woodworker, Ken Hart. Thanks a lot, buddy. All right, guys. Until next week. See you soon.